Hello and welcome to Japan Expert Insights and our Business Insights Forum. Every Thursday, Tim Sullivan and I, Mai Matsuoka, lead a discussion looking for insights, developments, and new opportunities for the business in Japan. In this podcast, we welcome comments, questions, and opinions. So if you haven't done so yet, join us next time. In the meantime, you can find us at japanexpertinsights.com and our YouTube channel, where we upload all the conversations on Japanese politics, business insights, and the role of Japan in the Indo-Pacific region. Today we've got a very special guest, Max Salmon. I'm sure that many of you probably well, know him uh, from LinkedIn. And not only that, Twitter too. And the reason for him being there, of course, Twitter mostly, LinkedIn recently, is that um, he's got um, a new enterprise. So uh, Mayak uh, started uh, his um, Maxion Planet uh, work working as a guide uh, several years ago. And uh, well, he actually went from zero to hero at that point. I'm starting from really zero to becoming one of the most uh, wanted guides uh, in Japan. Uh, then the pandemic hit um, and uh, he had to pivot. He had to change to find a way um, to go forward, to continue. And uh, after a short period of um, testing the waters, looking for opportunities, he pivoted. He uh, came up with an idea which has been gathering speed, and that idea is called Kampai Planet. So there have been a um, series on um, whiskey, Japanese whiskey, uh, Japanese whiskey making uh, also shochu, as if I'm not mistaken. Also, uh, the recent, the most recent one, uh, Max, uh, Mac just produced a documentary series about sake making on Sado. This is the, the title of the documentary series and uh, the trailer for the series was released uh, this past um, Tuesday. Um, the good news is that uh, the first episode of this extraordinary documentary is going to be released today after we let Mac uh, go at the end of this room. So um, if you have watched uh, the trailer, you know that there is the series will be packed with information, uh, with a lot of beautiful um sceneries with a lot of uh, uh, knowledge about history and it is i can say that this is a child of love uh, so i strongly urge you to uh, give mac a follow on linkedin if you haven't done that or on youtube or on twitter so that you know when his videos are released and watch them but before that uh, we're going to talk with him today about uh, how he came to the point of producing these videos of also uh, pivoting and not only that, but what what it takes to become successful here. So, Mac, I hope that this uh, introduction was not this bad. And, uh, well, we can start uh, now. S shall we listen to you uh, first, your briefing, and then open the room to everybody who wants to join and talk with you? Of course. Thank you so much, Maya. Great. Um, if you're looking yourself to pivot, then... Uh, given what a wonderful introduction you gave me, you can become my marketing manager if you like. So, uh, I would love that. Yeah. <laughs> thank you very much for that, and and welcome everybody. Thank you for joining us today. It's been a real honor to be invited by Maya and Tim and join the illustrious list of uh, incredible guests who I've enjoyed listening to over time and, and to become one of them is absolutely fantastic. So, just a little bit of background about myself. I've been living in Tokyo for 15 years. I first came to Japan in 2002. Uh, for the World Cup on holiday for three weeks to follow England around and uh, fell in love with not so much Japan, but actually Tokyo itself. For me, this felt like the most livable city, the greatest city in the world. At the time, I hadn't traveled that much, but fast forward to today and I've visited 108 countries. And so I say with, I hope some authority that for me, Tokyo really is the world's greatest metropolis, which ended up becoming a bit of a catchphrase for uh, Max and Planet, my travel business which I founded in February 2017. We recently celebrated the five-year anniversary of the launch of the website. Prior to that, I worked in the finance industry and life's a little bit too short to do that <laughs> for the whole <laughs> of your life. So uh, I wanted a new adventure and I really wanted the challenge of starting my own business. So that was uh, something I did. I wanted to follow my passion of travel and having traveled around the world uh, by myself, uh, you know, with friends, on private tours, on group tours, uh, self-guided. I wanted to bring all of that experience to create what I felt was, you know, the ultimate guiding experience uh, in Japan. So I launched my business in February 2017. It took about six or seven months before that became a sustainable prospect uh, for me to uh, earn uh, my living. And in 2018, I think my business grew 
I guess, about tenfold. And then in 2019, it doubled from the 2018 level. And we were all looking forward to 2020, all of us in tourism, including yourself, Maya, I guess. Uh, yes. Uh, and yes. Uh, that was, you know, the Hanami season for that year was predicted to be the most visited time in human history for Japan. Uh, for those who are not familiar with it, well, I'm sure people who live in Japan were familiar with the tourism growth just by the number of foreign faces that you saw on the streets. But, you know, if we cast our minds back to, say, 2011, Japan was receiving around 5 million visitors. Come 2019, we hosted 31.8 million visitors to this country, a number that was predicted to be surpassed in 2020, primarily because of the Olympics. Of course, that didn't materialize. And maybe that brings us to... Uh, the, the main focus of this talk, which is, you know, pivoting and, and trying to, to, to figure out what to do, uh, given that your, you know, your main source of income had dried up. Yes. So that was uh, definitely a devastating moment for the travel industry as a whole in, in Japan. But I think that uh, very few people actually expected this uh, pandemic to continue for so long. And I remember one of my colleagues, he was at that time the director of the board, and he said, well, we'll be out of this in six months because you remember how, uh, you know, SARS and MERS uh, uh, happened. So definitely we'll be out of this uh, for, in six months. We just need to, you know, to, to stay put. And then six months passed. There was nothing. It, the situation, if anything, it became worse. And then a year passed. Everybody was expecting the next year to be a little bit better. It wasn't. So um, I think that at that point, a lot of um, uh, people involved in the travel and tourism industry realized that uh, they had to think of other options uh, on the way forward. So um, I just wonder, I, I remember seeing you, Mac, uh, uh, seeing your videos about uh, Japanese uh, food. You also collaborated with some Japanese chefs, sushi chefs, also ramen um, chefs, and uh, you created some, uh, you had some project, uh, projects about that. But were those projects uh, conductive for you? I mean, to the, did they help you to get to the idea of uh, doing research and doing the videos on Japanese alcoholic drinks? Sure, I guess, yeah, well, you made me smile because I remember back in October uh, 2020, um, the Japanese government announced that they were looking to welcome uh, tourists back into the country in April 2021, right? Which now seems completely insane um, and, and a level of optimism. And of course, the irony, given that without wishing to get too political, the government's handling of this, of the borders of, of this country has been, well, let's say questionable to say the least. So it's amazing that those news reports were going around back then. But yes, I, I think not just your boss, Maya, but most of us maybe didn't really deep down expect that, you know, two years on, we would still be in this situation. And I sometimes wonder if I had really been able to forecast that it would be, you know, two, two and a half years where my primary income source would disappear, whether I would have done things differently. But anyway, um, so yeah, when you're, when you're working in travel and you're faced with the fact that you have no tourists, uh, you have uh, two choices. You either put your feet up for as long as the borders remain closed, which is not really my style. I'm always looking to try to do something. Um, you know, this experience has definitely given me uh, an insight into my dream of early retirement and whether that's something that I really want to do. Because faced with the retirement that um, COVID imposed on me, I couldn't help but try to find some new projects. So the first one of these was going online. So many people and many companies as well started offering uh, online experiences, uh, given the fact that the borders to their countries were closed. And this is something I thought about a lot. So over the course of my journey through Match and Planet, um, I've ended up primarily working with what would be considered, I guess, high net worth clients. Um, basically, the sort of guests who would be staying in hotels like the Peninsula, the Palace, the Amman. Um, you know, some of these have ended up being celebrities, sportsmen, you know, founders of, of uh, famous messaging apps, uh, etc. And, you know, to then scale back. So if, if you're running an online experience, one of your difficulties is always going to be how much to charge for that experience. Yeah. And you definitely, the, you, you need to be able to charge enough to make it worth your while to do it. Um, but that's extremely difficult to do. You know, it's just it's just very difficult to charge, you know, a, a hundreds of dollars for um for, for a, you know, a, a tour off your phone where you've walked around uh, Meiji Jingu. So 
I decided to take a different approach. Um, I ended up working with a chef and running online cooking classes. And so what we would do is once a month, we would we would uh, prepare a dish, uh, which was, tip, of course, Japanese cuisine. So okonomiyaki, shirashi sushi, uh, miso ramen, tonkatsu. And we would run two classes on one day, one in the morning uh, for the US time zone and then one in the evening uh, for the European time zone. And those actually went very well. So everything that I had done up to that point was private. Uh, private meaning a group size could be one person or could be a hundred people, but it would be a private group. But this was the first time where we had done something that was that was group. You know, anything anybody can join. And I was very happy to see that these were really successful. It was great having had a community of people who were fans of you know what Maxion Planet did. It was great to tap into that, and we found the core uh, bunch of of loyal uh, guests who would join us every single month for uh, for those. So that was kind of the first major pivot. And those lasted for one year from basically July 2021 until June, 20, sorry, July 2020 until June 2021. And then why did I stop them? Because what we found is from April 2021, we were getting less and less people in, in these classes because of the fact that countries were opening up. You know, the UK mm -hmm. and the US at that time were starting to um, lessen the restrictions on movement that they had had the lockdowns uh, that were happening in the UK and so as a result, people were busier than they were before that at the weekends. And I just thought, you know, having done uh, one year of them, it was uh, it was a good chance to uh, to wrap that one up. The second major pivot I went to is, of course, into domestic tourism. And that was very interesting. Um, to cut a long story short, I was welcoming Japanese guests to Tokyo who wanted to be guided in English around the city, which was a really interesting experience. Um, and that worked out very well for me around the infamous go to travel campaign period, which was the end of 2020 and the start of 2021. Again, that was an interesting experience in terms of marketing that in terms of um, the how to charge for that as well. And in terms of the type of experience that these guests needed. But that was a, a phenomenal experience. And then my third major pivot has been into content creation. And Maya, that's basically that aspect. Pulling all of that together is then what led into the launch of the Canpai Planet project. Well, I can only say that it's fascinating and that uh, all the dots co connect backwards. But uh, all the experiences we have, uh, they eventually come together to produce uh, something, to help us produce something uh, new and something exciting. And uh, to me, well, this the, the last one, the content production, this has been something very inspirational because, um, well, we work in the same field our lanes are a little bit different, but still. And watching you has been such an inspirational experience that, uh, I mean, I have talked to Tim about you a lot. I have talked to other people uh, about you a lot and what you're doing and how uh, how much passion you put in all these projects. So I wonder um, why alcohol, why Japanese whiskey, why Japanese sake? So what got you there? Sure. So when I first started my uh, travel business, Maxion Planet, five years ago, I decided that I needed to be on every single social media platform. So prior to that, there was no, there's no Max Salman uh, Twitter out there, you know? Uh, mm -hmm. So I, I joined a lot of these things. I, I joined in, there's no Max Salman Instagram, you know, there's only uh, Max and Planet and now a Canpai Planet Instagram. So I decided to join all of these social media platforms. And YouTube, of course, is both the second largest search engine on earth, but it's also a social media platform. So I felt I needed to be on that. And I started putting some videos up and I had a very cynical view of YouTube back then. I, I knew nothing about the way that uh, platform worked. And I had this rather cynical view that you can throw anything up there and that people would watch it. And so I was putting, you know, I, I would go to a, a ramen shop and I would film the guy making the bowl you know, kind of ASMR style. And then I would just throw up that video. And then I was a bit shocked, you know, when it didn't, you know, when it would only get, you know, 20 views or something. Or I remember being invited to an event at the embassy of Iceland and creating a mini like three minute uh, video about that experience and then throwing it up there. And, you know, and finally I figured out a little bit about the way the platform works around about the time that the Rugby World Cup happened here. So uh, that was an incredible experience for anybody who was in Japan at the time. And I managed to attend 14 games during that period. And I made a vlog about each one. And I remember going to the Japan-Russia game, which was the first game, uh, posting a vlog about it the next day. And, you know, it, it got a little bit more traction than my stuff normally does. But then three days later, I looked and this thing had received 40,000 views. 
and I thought, oh, wow, this is this is quite incredible. And the level of interaction I was getting was pretty amazing. I then attended a game the next week and people were coming up to me in the stadium saying, oh, Mac, you know, we, we you're Mac, right? We, we watched your video. Oh, thank you so much. And that was when a few things started to click about exactly how to make engaged content um, and the kind of community that can be built uh, around that. So I had my little moment in the sun uh, making these vlogs during the Rugby World Cup. But then you have the shock down to earth because you think, oh, wow, well, you know, my subscriber base has grown dramatically. I think during that period, it, it really did grow tenfold. And so I posted, I started thinking, oh, well, this is going to attract greater viewership for um, the content I regularly make, which is generally about Japanese culture and the Japanese history. And then you post the video and then nobody watches it. Uh, so so that, that's been an interesting journey. So anyway, fast forwarding. In October 2020, I really wanted to improve my video editing skills. And I decided to challenge myself by making 12 videos, one video per week for 12 weeks. And video editing is rather like driving a car. You know, you, mm. you, you know this is why we have so many so-called paper drivers in Japan. You know, people who got their license when they were at university or just before they went to university and then have not driven for you know years. So video editing is kind of like that. In order to improve, you really need to be doing it day in, day out. And... You know, during that period, one of the, the I thought, well, I want to be able to make sustainable content. And one of the things I thought about was basically taste testing food and drink. So I started a little mini series, which is called Tokyo Taste Test on the Maction Planet YouTube channel. And so that idea was always at the back of my head. And it grew and grew and grew. And then I decided, no, 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 this this specific focus on on drinks needs to have its own platform. You know, I want to ultimately build this into some kind of brand. And so that basically led to the, the birth of, of Kanpai Planet. Oh, another, another piece of uh, your fascinating story. <laughs> I can see, and I remember watching, um, I, I have watched almost all the videos of that uh, on uh, Kanpai Planet, but the one which still sticks with me, you know, and whenever I close my eyes and think about uh, Maxion Planet is the one about, uh, well, with Godzilla and... Uh, <laughs> So you, you filmed it in uh, Shinjuku, right? I think it was in Shinjuku, yes, no? Yes, I did, yes. Yes, it was such an entertaining piece of work and also very informative at the same time. So I don't know if anybody in uh, the audience has watched um, watched it, but I do encourage you to uh, go to uh, Kampai Planet channel on YouTube and uh, find it and watch it. So I'm sure that uh, it will lift your spirits and... Well, no pun intended. If I can say this, I'm not sure anyway. What a fascinating story. And, you know, it's it's interesting because it's like I feel like you're always exploring options. And, you know, I want to believe there's like this magic sauce to understanding, for example, what is going to go viral on the Internet versus what isn't going to go viral, you know. And like you, that I put up stuff that I thought, oh, man, I bet people want to watch this. And like you said, nothing happens. It, right. And then I've, I put up other stuff just randomly. And I just I've gotten like over 100,000 hits on one. It's a lady who works on the Shinkansen. And before she leaves the car, as you all know, she turns around and bows and then goes to the next car. That's all it was. It was just a clip of that. And it, I would have never guessed. Right. In your case, you kept exploring and I guess your guiding philosophy is fun education, you know, interesting, fun, entertaining education, which is, I love that, you know? Um, so my hat's off. And the fact that you um, stumbled onto, you know, uh, an area, not stumbled onto, you were clearly exploring, but that caught on and just my hat's off to you. I, I have so much respect. Every time I hear you, I, I'm more impressed. So, um, you know, and I also like the, the, the term sustainable content. I think that's an interesting uh, way to put it. So, you know, that's, that's all I had. Just, this is great. I'm enjoying it. Thanks a lot, Tim. Uh, the, before I move on, I want to mention the, the video that, that Maya has kindly uh, uh, pr helped promote. Um, when I've been making these videos on Kampai Planet, uh, the main focus has been Japanese whiskey over the last 12 months. Uh, for the next month, it's going to be sake, and, and we'll get a chance to talk about that uh, coming up. But uh, there has been a, a strategy of sorts. So, that Godzilla energy video was deliberately uh, made. Uh, one of the motivations for it was the fact it's a non-alcoholic drink. It's, a, it's an energy drink. And I really wanted people to know that, that the topic is Japan's drinks, uh, not just uh, booze. So uh, I made that. And then 
one of the the problems I generally have is that you know I really don't like to do things half assed. I re- it, it just it just pains me to to feel attached to something that hasn't had my maximum effort. So I can't now just sit in a chair and and wax lyrical for thirty minutes about something. I really do try my best in the content I'm making to value the audience's time. So the way I thought about it was this: you know, when you launch a new platform, people don't care about you at all, right? They because they right. don't know you from Adam. So you need to give them something that they, that is valuable to them, and that that value could be just the entertainment of watching the the Shinkansen staff, uh, you know, act in a certain way and, and show their respect uh, to the passengers. Tim, as you mentioned, you know, that isn't perhaps uh, done in in other countries. So you know, you don't have to be reviewing the tale of Genji every episode or or, or, or in every piece of content that you that you share. So. That's been part of my strategy is, is to create something, you know, when people watch one of my 10 minute videos, I want them to feel like they've learned an hour of information, uh, but in an edu- uh, educational way, I, I use this word edutainment, um, which I quite like because I, for me, that sums up the philosophy of, of what I want to make. So yeah, I didn't just review this Godzilla energy drink and it sat in a chair. I went in front of the Godzilla statue in Shinjuku and <laughs> just hid around the corner and, 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 um, and was filmed reviewing this thing and then we actually shot the thing from two angles and then and then cut them up which if you can do is all, if anybody listening making video is always a a good idea to uh, uh to, to be able to to do that to create uh, audience um, engagement and what's called a pattern interrupt anyway so um yeah i'm very i've been very uh happy with the the success of of Kanpai planet uh in particular uh because it it shows that there's been a a need and a, a marketplace for that content. There are plenty of people who are writing about uh, Japanese drinks, and there are plenty of people who are making podcasts about uh, Japanese drinks, but there are few people who are consistently putting out content in video. And making video has given me this really very new perspective. I, I now, possibly for the first time in my life, understand why when you go and see a movie, there are 20 minutes of credits in small print. Um, and it's also made me understand something. Um, I've, I've always historically been a big reader and I've always been very angry about the, the desire of uh, human beings to convert everything into a film. You know, I'm like, the, the book was fine. Why do we even need a film about it? But making video has made me really appreciate how, you know, people get very excited when they find out that a book is going to be made into a film and people mm-hmm. get, how to put this, slightly less excited when they find out that a, a novel adaptation of that film is going to be released because... <laughs> You know, filmmaking if really is, you know, I think one of the highest uh, art forms of, of entertainment. And if you can somehow get it right or just elevate what you're doing to a slightly higher standard, then, uh, you know, you can really create some very powerful stuff. Yes, indeed. I think that for everybody who has uh, gone online, that's uh, always the, the dilemma. And also, as you say, turning books into movies like the books usually, what my thought originally were uh, in the beginning, not in the beginning, but they, they used to be, uh, were that you can get a lot more information uh, by reading a book and also exercise your imagination there. But uh, now, you know, after just thinking about uh, videotaping and also turning, um, let's say, stories into pictures, pictured stories or motion motion stories, let's say, video videoing them, it, it it gives gives me a totally different perspective on how you know on on the books on the stories and so on, and it's always a challenge, and um, I I believe that in my case personally I still have to to I, to learn a lot, but uh, thankfully there are people like you who have done it and um, who are out there so they can be you can be an inspiration also a person to learn from Tim please go I'm sorry for. Oh, not at all. Not at all. No, I mean, uh, yeah, the video production, anyone that's even tried a little bit realizes that it's it can be very exacting. And, you know, uh, and when I see people like Mac and also Richard, you know, put together these videos, I'm kind of in awe. Um, and, you know, you mentioned I think you used the word pan- pattern interrupt, you know, like a technical effect. Right. And I, I've really come to realize, again, working with watching Richard, um, how important it is to have those pattern interruptions, but also how it can be used to make a 25 second segment feel like six seconds, you know. Um, and, and so with the shorter attention spans and everybody busy and, you know, time is, you know, there's only so much information you could take in. You got, you know, you tend to either got to keep things really short or what you do put out there has to feel like 
it's not taking up time because it's keeping your attention. And as you said, it's, you know, you're entertaining people and still educating them at the same time. So my hat's off to you for those production skills and that, that knowledge. I have a lot more respect for it now that I tried it. Yes, and it is also, I'm sorry, Mark, just one more thing uh, I wanted to add is that what you said about uh, offering people value, uh, which is meaningful uh, to them, is such an important point, which we tend to forget. Uh, Many of us forget it just sometimes. Many of us forget it uh, most of the time. And I wonder, how do you get to the point? How do you know that, um, well, you mentioned that uh, you offer edutainment, Right. But is it the only thing which you believe brings value to the people who watch your videos? Is there anything else there? Mm, that's actually a very good question. I guess on, on Camp I Planet, I think there's a few things that people are, are looking for. I mean, you know, if, if, if YouTube offers you a video with the title, you know, Yamazaki 18 Review, or I think imaginatively titled Yamazaki 18 Unicorn or Donkey, then I guess you're going to click on it for a few reasons. One is, you, you know, you may have... Um, consume this drink or drunk this whiskey uh, before and you want to find uh, somebody else's viewpoint on it you may have never drunk it but you want to find out a, a viewpoint on it um, you may be familiar with my content and you know that you know whatever my thoughts are about how it tastes which is again very subjective um, you know 80 percent of the video is actually going to be about the history of uh, the drink and so you know, you're going to get huge, huge value. Even if you disagree with my taste buds, you're going to get huge value out of learning about the history of this whiskey, the history of Suntory, the history of the Yamazaki brand. And then I think, Maya, maybe this is where you're leading on to. Over time, people get invested in you. You know, if you build, you start to build up trust. So it's taken, you know, it, it, it's taken a lot of effort, but I definitely sense now that there is a community of people who are just interested in what I'm putting out. And an example of this is that, like I said, the majority of the last uh, 12 months of content has been about Japanese whiskey. And that's been a deliberate content strategy because the very sad thing is that no one is typing the word Nihonshu into Google. Right. right? Nobody is, to very few people are typing the words Japanese sake into Google. But many, many people are typing the words Hibiki, Nika, Suntory, etc. into Google. Yeah. And so I thought, okay, let's start off with whiskey. Let's build a community of people who who trust my opinions, who are interested in the quality of my content, and then move them and bring them to start to be, you know, to open up the world of Japan's drinks, you know, shochu, right? Um, uh, Sake, uh, even, you know, green tea, et cetera, you know, Japanese gin. And that's what I'm finding now. So that kind of is, is one of the reasons why, you know, it's only now that I've decided to release the Making Sake on Sado series. Wow, that's interesting. Very interesting. Yes, it is. Um, we've got Yuka. Good, mo- good morning to you, Yuka. It is good evening, I know. Thank you for coming yeah. up. Thank you. It's, it's, uh, thank you for another interesting topic. Um, so, actually, I was going to ask, you know, Maya asked why whiskey? And then, I th- Mac, I think you addressed a little bit. And I got that because of the, you know, like, a, I guess that's, a, you know, it's your purpose. So you, you have to come up with the easier uh, the search words, but uh, still, let me ask you this: uh, Why has to be in the alcohol? Uh, the reason I'm asking because it just so happened that you know my friends and I were talking about Japanese chocolate. How the you know the, the hundred yen, the cheap chocolate, um, in my humble opinion, is even better than Godiva's. So I'm just wondering. That's my question one. Well, thank you, Maya, for agreeing. <laughs> um, <laughs> So just my question, why alcohol? And then I have a follow-up question, if I may. Thank you. No, that's a really great question, actually. So let's, let's take a step back from the question and, and basically kind of answer the question of why anything. You know, So I, I originally, like I said, I, I started my travel business and I started social media for that travel business, Maction Planet. And there is a Maction Planet YouTube channel on there. And if you go on there right now, you're going to find some videos about Super Nintendo World in uh, Universal Studios Japan in Osaka. You're going to find some videos of me um, tasting Chankonabe at uh, Sumo Wrestling. You're going to find some videos of me uh, drinking the limited edition vanilla float flavored Coca-Cola, which came out. You're going to find a lot of videos about the Rugby World Cup. Uh, You're going to find videos about the Akogishi Sai, which is the Matsuri for the 47 Ronin in Senkakuchi. Um, Torinoichi, the the festival, the business, you know, um, Kumada festival that happens in November. Anyway, the point I'm making is that there's a lot of content there. And so somebody coming to that for the first time, you know, may not 
understand exactly what it is like why should they subscribe you know why should they be invested not just in the individual video that they may have searched for but in the you know in the series in the platform itself you know in match and planet so one of the pieces of advice that you always get is start niche right so you know meaning start with for example japanese whiskey you know so so people you you make a video about japanese whiskey you make a second one about japanese whiskey and then people over time you know you're educating the audience they understand okay this is the place for japanese whiskey content and then once you build up a following based on that you then kind of can move that audience into a different direction what you're seeing now with a lot of、uh, youtubers and i i really hate that word because for some reason it ev- evokes images of of m- people much younger than me and so you know <laughs> but anyway what you're seeing now with a lot of youtubers is they're starting a second channel so You know, maybe they built up three million subscribers talking about anime and manga, and now they want, you know, creatively they want to explore a lot of new opportunities, and they have the audience to do that. Now, I kind of broke that niche rule a little bit、uh, because Yuka, I, I, I'm not a niche person. You know, I've travelled to 108 countries.、Um, you know, I'm interested in languages. I'm interested in my background is massive physics. I'm interested in, you know, whatever. Anyway, I'm interested in many, 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 many things. So, just whiskey or just Nihonshu. I couldn't do it, so I focused on drinks because there's a lot of channels talking about Japanese food, but but really not many in、uh, in a language other than Japanese talking about drinks. And then the、uh, corollary to what you've said is I also do have another platform. So I, now that I have these two channels for my creativity, for me, Maxion Planet is a place where I can post whatever I want. So if you're very passionate about 100 yen chocolate, which I am as well. And especially milk chocolate. I'm not、uh, the best reviewer of dark chocolate, and you can guarantee me that if I post this video, it'll you'll, you'll help promote it. Then I'd be happy to、uh, I'd be happy to make a video about it. Oh, incidentally,、uh, I love dark chocolate, which is actually I've heard it's healthier. But anyway, okay, that's a side note.、Uh, yeah, okay,、um, okay. I see the hand is up, so.、Um, Um, I'm gonna、uh, hold on to my second question.、Uh, let me ask the second question if you guys have、uh, more time. Thank you. Thank you, Yuka. Hi, Dave. Good morning. Good morning.、Uh, first, thank you, Mac, for a really, really、uh, great talk. I also pivoted slightly during the pandemic, so it was really interesting、uh, listening to your journey, and、um, I could see some、uh, similarities there. And right now, I'm also. Focusing a lot on content creation and itching to get into、uh, YouTube,、um, but one of the questions I keep coming back to is how can I connect content that I'm interested in that is entertaining to my business? And I'm just wondering how you see Kanbai Planet within your whole business plan. Is it something that you consider an investment to possible、uh, future clients, or is it something that you just It's separated from any kind of、uh, marketing within your business, and it's just something you do because you're interested in. Yeah, that's an excellent question, and、um, let me just compose my thoughts because it is—it's obviously something I've thought about a lot. And one of the reasons, Heidi, that you, of course, need to、uh, think about it a lot is that we all need to pay our rent. So, you know, <laughs> people who, who believe that things sort of exist in this.、Um, You know, world of of purity.、Uh, I mean, it's it's a bit naive, right? We, we're we're expending time, and we need some reward for that. So, obviously, when I started Campi Planet, you know, I run drink stores. If you visit MaxionPlanet dot com, which I see by complete coincidence, Maya has literally just shared into the kind of the links of of, of our chat here.、Um, you will see that there is, you know, Tokyo sake tours, Tokyo whiskey tours, Tokyo、um, shochu tours on there, and so. Originally, I thought, well, you know, let's start this drinks、uh, outlet, and then there's going to be an audience, and the pandemic will, at some point, I'm told, <laughs> be over and, <laughs>、yeah. or something. At least the borders will open up, and people will have seen these videos and thought, Mac knows some stuff about whiskey, and who better to do a whiskey tour with, right? So that was maybe the most immediate, you know,、uh, alignment of what I'm doing with Mac and Planet. I haven't tried in the first year, so it has been all just over one year since I started Campi Planet. I haven't thought too much about it. I've kind of tried to keep it quite pure,、um, and that's been my motivation because each of these videos takes me about three days to construct. Right? It's it's about、uh, three quarters of a day of、uh, kind of concepting and scripting, about a day of filming, and then about a, a day and a half of of editing. And so I've just you know what's kept me going during those long hours on Premiere Pro has just been okay. You know, I'm doing this. For the community, you know, I'm doing this to put information out there, which has it, it's it's not just not been out there in Japanese. In some cases, it's not been out there in any language, you know, pulled together in this way. However, obviously, going forward, I would like to see it it grow、um, into more of a business. 
Uh, the first step of that actually happened two days ago. I, I'm, an, I'm a bit annoyed with myself that I didn't do this earlier, but it, t- it took me one minute to create the link buymeacoffee.com uh, slash canpiplanet. And I just, I haven't talked about it. This is the first time I'm actively talked about it. I put it in the video description of the Saka trailer and, you know, already a couple of uh, people, um, you know, some, I think, long-term fans of what I'm doing have, have decided to, to contribute, which has been fantastic. Um, but yeah, I'm hoping that Canpi Planet becomes a brand. I'm hoping that um, there's opportunities to maybe private label some drinks. So, you know, go to some sake distributors and, you know, find a way. F- remember, the sake industry is in decline in this country and find a way to, to help them promote their sake using the Canpi Planet brand. And for people, hopefully, who trust my palate, who trust my opinions, who trust that I'll be selecting good stuff, you know, to introduce Shochu uh, and to people who are, you know, uh, currently whiskey drinkers and unfamiliar with that. There's potential for uh, books, for example, you know, the Kanpai Planet Guide to Sake or the Kanpai Planet Guide to uh, Drinking in Tokyo. So these are the kind of things that I think may present themselves in the future. But I'm not thinking too much about that right now. I hope that answers your question, Heidi. Yes, yes, thank you very much. Yes, I, I haven't actually watched any of your content yet. I only heard about it today, but I will. But I imagine um, you've been so successful because of that, because you haven't had an angle. It hasn't been about promoting your business. It's about, as you said, uh, bringing value. And I imagine as you build up that trust and you build up that community, then when the time comes to kind of not necessarily cash in, but to um, take it into a different um in a, in a different uh, avenue, then um, you should be able to have enough followers to have built up enough trust at that point to um, for them to to come with you, even if it it does mean you know that they're uh, investing some money in something or they're purchasing something or they're just buying you a coffee. So thank you very much, and thank you Yuka for letting me uh, jump in there. Um, I'm done. Thank you very much. Heidi, just I think what you've just said also uh, reminded me about something, which is about the the community as well, right? There's a lot of focus about size. I mean. Um, and, and the metrics, right? So when, when money is not a metric, then, then what are my metrics for success on, for example, Kanpai Planet? It, and, it, you know, it is, it is views and, and subscribers. And y- y- YouTube provides you with these analytics, right? And these analytics are meant to help you grow your channel, but I think they're a huge mental health issue because where, you know, social media has allowed us to stick the dopamine hit in our pocket and has basically made us addicts to a perception of happiness. Uh, YouTube <laughs> analytics, like... There are so many metrics. It's not just, oh, I posted something on Facebook and I got, you know, 10 likes and five comments. I mean, you know, you may not get a lot of views on something, but you may, oh my God, the average view duration on this video has gone up. So it is, it's like, it's like a terrible mental health minefield, I think. But anyway, um, you know, you, you can get very fixated. So I will put out a video and, and, you know, I'll get, oh my God, you know, I, I only got 300 views on it in, in the first 24 hours or something. But it, you know, it's the investment, like I'm, I'm noticing the more and more, you know, the, the level of engagement, the level of returning viewers, um, the, the, the length that people are watching the content, all of this is sort of slowly, 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 not in a straight line as well, but kind of creeping up and creeping up. So, yeah, you know, the, they, you know, I'm sure you're familiar with concepts of the thousand true fans and things like that. Um, a little bit cliched at times, but yeah, it, it's much more important to have an invested community, you know, than, than a large uninvested community. Interesting. I, you know, I just pulled up uh, the your uh, official trailer on YouTube, and by the way, I saw it, and it's really, really well done. I'm not a sake drinker, but it makes me want to go do it anyway because the experience is cool. It is just cool, and I like the idea of those meaningful things. Not only do you learn, I, I imagine maybe you walk away with a bottle or two of sake that you had your hand at making. I don't know, but having you know just that experience is wonderful. And I'm reading the co- the comments on on this video mm. and they're like really really fantastic and I, I i agree everything heidi said i i think there's one more ingredient that comes across mac is your authenticity like you you, you use the word pure but to me that's kind of i see that as off that's the authentic you and doing it your way i think is adds value in itself right I, um it, it doesn't look forced or contrived i guess and uh it reflects it not only in the video but in the comments I mean, great. Th- thanks, Tim, for your kind words. I mean, you know, video, <laughs> you can't video ha- like I've learned so much about the bad habits I have had. By You can't you can't bullshit your way through authenticity on video. You know, if, if, if you're not interested in what you're talking about, then um, it will come across. And I'm really, really happy with what you've said. By the way, the thing about the thing about video is well, I, I write a reasonable amount um, for various publications and for my own blog as well on, on MaxionPlanet.com. 
and I, I this is uh, honest truth. I'm really not bothered about how many people read what I write. I mean, I love writing and I'm very proud of what I put out, but honestly, but with, with video, it takes so long to make that I am very, I really do want people to watch it. And one of the biggest compliments that I have received over the last 12 months has been, you know, from, from commenters, uh, from viewers who say, you know, who even say things like, I don't drink alcohol, you know, I, I don't touch a single drop, but I was really interested in how you explained, you know, the making of sake or the, 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 you know, the create the war between, um, you know, Masa Taka Taketsuru and Shin, uh, uh, Shinjiro Tori that led to the, uh, you know, formation of Nika whiskey, you know, after Masa Taka Taketsuru left uh, Santori, right? Like, those are interesting things. I, I really would love all of you here. Uh, one of the whiskeys I reviewed uh, recently, um, I think the last video I put out before this, this sake trailer, which has been mentioned a couple of times, was about a product only available in the US called Takamine Koji Whiskey. And the Takamine of Takamine Koji Whiskey is a gentleman, Dr. Jokichi Takamine. And he's the guy who isolated and patented adrenaline. If you're an asthmatic and you've been saved by an EpiPen, you owe your life to, isolate- uh, to, to this gentleman. Um, the, if you've ever had indigestion and you've taken the ta- Taka Diastase, um, that's the Taka of Taka Diastase digestive aid is the Taka of Takamine. That is one of the most fascinating stories I've come across in any subject of any nationality, how this individual came to the US, found a wife, came back to Japan, went back to the US, tried to make Koji whiskey in the in 1894, um, potentially putting out, you know, the malt, uh, the maltsters, people who make malt, which is typically how beer and whiskey are made by germinating or tricking barley into germinating. And, um, you know, his, his lab was burnt down. He was almost assassinated, persevered, moved to New York. He's also the guy, I'm really spoiling the story now, but he's the guy who uh, paid for the donation of the cherry blossoms in 1910 and 1912 from Tokyo to Washington, D.C. He's the guy who founded the Nippon Club. For me, I don't care if you switch off six minutes in when we get to the tasting notes because you've got no intention of buying the product. That story and learning about how koji is used to to make drinks in Japan, I think is absolutely fascinating. That's a great story. Yes, it is. Truly, it is. Um, thank you, Mark, for giving us um, these stories. I hope that uh, I was uh, I could keep pace with uploading the links here to the videos you talk about. Um, Yuka, we have time. So if uh, you're ready with, with your second question. All right. Thank you. Um, yeah, actually. The Koji whiskey was very interesting. And I kind of remember seeing the label. I can't remember where. But anyway, um, so uh, my question, you know, like uh, it just, I was kind of sort of, maybe I've been kind of losing guts to ask. But anyway, um, so let's, I've heard that like a Japan is lifting ban on entry of foreigners. And so gradually, hopefully, the tourism will come back, right? So once you like a tour, tourist come back, what is your like a plan? Would you keep doing like a hybrid, like a the physical tours and online? Uh, I, I guess I'm sort of asking. Maybe you know the Maya can share her insight. So what is the uh, you know like outlook for tourism in Japan? This is a really excellent question for for the outlook. I think uh, Maya may may have a little bit more uh, mm-hmm. insight because uh, we've you know everybody has become an ap- amateur epidemiologist over the last two years, and we've all become amateur Nostradamuses over the last two years, right? But you really did raise an excellent question because, like I told you, each of these videos takes me three days to make, and that's for getting the promotion and everything around them. So I do worry, like I, you know, I need my full time job back. Please, if anybody in government is listening <laughs> to this, open the bloody borders ASAP, and and let's get let's get some money coming into you know ten percent of the world's population is involved in tourism related activities and it's been a horrific two years for them so come back and and um i guess i'll just have to work harder i'm no stranger to hard work in 2019 i guided uh on my feet for uh 300 days of the year on average for 10 hours per day uh so i often do an eight hour tour in the day and a four hour tour in the evening so I'm, I'm no stranger to burning the midnight oil. And I guess if i'm committed to the Kanpai planet project and i want to keep putting out a video every two weeks then I'm going to have to find a way to manage around uh, my tours. And I think that's what's going to mean, UK, is a lot of forward planning. So, you know, there are slightly, there are low seasons in in Japan in tourism. And I guess I'm going to have to work my ass off to make a lot of videos, make a lot of content during that period that I can then release when I'm hopefully guiding again every day during uh, Hanami, you know, during Golden Week, during summer holidays and and during uh, Koyo, the autumn uh, leaf season. Maya, I'll hand over to you to 
tell us when categorically <laughs> when the borders will be reopened, please. Okay. Uh, well, thank you for asking, Yuka, and uh, thank you for giving me the, the opportunity to say it once again the same thing, Mac. Uh, well, because people ask this question quite of, quite often, and uh, the latest. Well, the latest news we've got is that, uh, well, the borders are open. They uh, opened two days ago on March 1st uh, for um, students, academics um, and workers, uh, foreign workers who come to Japan. Uh, of course, the borders have never been closed or at least not for a long time uh, for permanent residents here. So the capacity and you, I'm sure you know this, but uh, just... Just let me say that uh, the 24-hour capacity uh, at airports, ports of entry in Japan, has been increased to 5,000 per day, which is a very, very small number. Um, so they actually they decreased also the quarantine uh, and uh, the the border and well the entry measures. But um, actually, the travel industry and keidanren in Japan are lobbying for opening the borders further decreasing the measures, the entry measures uh, for even for tourists. So at this point of time, uh, we know that uh, probably in May, April or May, so the go-to campaign, the domestic campaign will resume. It could resume under a different name. It's not not sure yet. But uh, the problem here in Japan is that, uh, you know, whether it is domestic or inbound travel, there is, you know, a general perception among the public here that uh, travel spreads the infections. So people are not very accepting of uh, the idea of traveling, be it domestically or, you know, internationally. So that's the first hurdle which uh, has to be removed in order for tourism, you know, to, to pick up again. And uh, of course, uh, inbound tourism uh, is probably even more difficult, you know, for the, the general public here to accept than, to, than domestic travel. However, at the moment, the, the Japanese travel industry is thinking about uh, is thinking that you know things may pick up after the upper house elections in early summer, and that's when uh, tours will be you know international travel uh, should resume, uh, the capacity at the ports of entry should be increased, and eventually we'll have people coming from overseas to travel uh, in Japan. But even then, probably the first. Uh, uh, tours that come, they will be monitored tours, which means that uh, individual travelers may not be among the first, you know, to be let into the country. It would rather be tours that they travel on an itinerary um, and they actually um, observe all the measures for uh, reducing the spread of uh, the coronavirus. And of course, this is uh, what we have at the moment. This may change if there is a change in the uh, situation in Japan or overseas. So even though we know this, uh, you know, that this is the general direction in which travel and tourism is expected to go, of course, it can change at any point of time. I'm sorry that I cannot be more concrete about Yeah, thank you, Maya. Um, actually, I visited, like, you know, like an embassy website, and then depending on the city, they say different things. Um, and then my question, actually, I'm sorry, I don't mean to put you on the spot, but... Um, so I'm a U.S. citizen, but I have a family in Japan. So I want to visit visit them. But do you happen to know if I'm considered to be a tourist? Haha, <laughs> that's a great question. Well, I cannot tell from the website. That's so... true. Yeah, I think that. Well, unfortunately, I cannot answer your question. But uh, okay, I guess that uh, the only way to to have an answer to it is to, uh, you know, call the embassy. Yeah, and ask them directly so that they can give you directions. Okay, yeah, all right. Okay, thank you. Oh, you're welcome. Okay, so, um, Mac, we're just nine minutes uh, past four o'clock, and I know that uh, you have something very special to do after we finish uh, this room today. Uh, correction, four minutes past nine o'clock. <laughs> what, what did I say? I think you said nine minutes past four. I don't know, maybe. maybe oh, I'm, I'm sorry. sorry. Oh, no. <laughs> no, that's okay. That's okay. okay. I'm I did want to thank Mac, though, for coming. Yes. Matt, what a great conversation. I, I Actually, I hope we can have him back in the future sometime. Oh, I hope. I would love to. It would be a real honor. Um, so, yeah, I think, Maya, what you're referring to, that there's something special I have to do is, so last summer I spent uh, one week making Nihonshu, making Japanese sake on Sado Island, which is one of the most beautiful islands in the Japanese archipelago. And for the last seven months, I've been uh, working uh, to make a video series about my time there, which is imaginatively titled Making Sake on Sado. And I released a trailer for that on the 1st of March, two days ago, which Maya has mentioned. And then starting today and every four days until the 31st of March, I'm releasing one episode 
uh, which will reflect one day of my time. Yeah, seen if you've done the maths quickly in your head, you'll be like, well, Mac, until the 31st of March is actually eight episodes. The final one is uh, yet to be revealed a uh, bonus. So it would be a real honor. And I'd love to have you along for the journey. So please uh, go and watch the trailer. The link's been put into the, uh, the clubhouse. And uh, like all YouTubers are forced to say, please subscribe and click that bell icon for all notifications to be the first to et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. But seriously, please go and have a look. This is I've worked with the professional editor on this one um, at considerable expense. This is document. I believe it's, it's documentary grade. Uh, we've got custom graphics in there as we start to really explain the details of the second making process. So yeah, please go and the trailer's only four minutes. Give that a watch. And if you like what you see, I hope you'll join me later today for uh, day one. And thank you to Maya and Tim for having me along today and for everybody who left questions. I, I really appreciate mm. it. I really enjoyed it. Thank you so much, Matt. Thank you, Mark. And again, I urge everybody in the room to um, have a look at uh, Kampai Planet, uh, the YouTube channel, also at the blog, uh, Maxim Planet. There are some wonderful pieces there about the Japanese history, Japanese customs. Um, you can feel the passion uh, of Mac there, uh, passion for research, passion for history, for um, traditional culture and for Tokyo as well, because, uh, well, that's how Mac, and that's why Mac came uh, to Japan, actually. So, Mac, thank you very much indeed for this wonderful conversation. I very much hope to have you here again when uh, your schedule allows. So let's talk about this. And um, so I'm looking uh, forward to watching the first episode of um, the documentary series Making Sake on Sado. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. So thank you to everybody who listened uh, to the conversation. We are looking forward to having you here again uh, next time. Have a great day. Thank you for coming and staying with us today. We will be on air next week on Thursday at 8 a.m. Japan time again. So join us. Until then, you can find us at japanexpertinsights.com and our YouTube channel, where we upload all the conversations on Japanese politics, business insights, and the role of Japan in the Indo-Pacific region. If you want to stay informed about our upcoming events, you can follow us on Clubhouse, LinkedIn, Twitter, and Facebook. Again, we're looking forward to your joining us next week. Until then, stay well and make the best of the day. See you.